Hello, everybody. Whew. It is so hot in this car. I live in North Carolina, and North Carolina. Ooh, hold up now. I'm trying to leave the engine on because I don't want to die in the sweltering heats of injustice out here because in North Carolina, it doesn't know what it wants to do. I think like two days ago, it was 19 degrees, and now I got a sweater on, and I feel like I've made terrible decisions for my life. I really don't know what I should do here and what I shouldn't do here in this state because we don't have regulations on things. They want to regulate everything. They should regulate the weather. This don't make no sense. Okay, I'm not a meteorologist, so I'm not going to go into all of that. I did not come to do that. I came to talk about my biggest insecurities. Um, these are things that are super important to me because, as I stated, this channel was about letting go of the idea of needing to be perfect. Um, so I'm going to be real, real vulnerable with y'all, which is kind of hard to do when it comes to your insecurities because those are things we typically would like to hide and run from. But I'm just going to keep it real with y'all again because that's the whole point of this, right? So if you've ever watched my previous videos, you might be zooming in a little bit and like, hey, is that a, is that, a, look like she got a little, you're right it is a beard like i have a beard sometimes like i have always tried to hide it i have always tried to make it like less visible by holding my head a certain way doing certain things i wouldn't even dare make a video if i had a beard uh, a grain of stubble but i have grown to a point where i can now show up on camera or show up in person even when i don't have my face waxed and all the way put together, but it was a journey to get here. Having a beard was probably one of the worst things I felt like could ever happen to me in my life as a female. I remember the first time I even discovered that females can have facial hair. I was in church with my mom and I just so happened to turn around because you know when them doors swing open, if some whoever coming in is kind of loud, you can't help but to, you know, swing your neck back and see who it is so in the process of me as a little girl just kind of sitting on my knees turning around to see who was coming i didn't even make it to the door before i looked about three or four pews back and i saw a lady with the thickest mustache i had ever seen on anyone man or woman and my mouth it just it just fell open like to the point where my mom had to grab me she had to shake me back into reality and turn me around and i'm thinking to myself the most vain thing that this woman is in here and she has the audacity to have red lipstick on with a whole mustache this is in a, this is not in the time where everyone is free to do what they want to do and live how they want to live so my little brain is confused as to what i am seeing but just to be safe, I do the second vain, most vain thing I did, besides judging her, the second most vain thing I did was I prayed. I immediately prayed, God, please don't never let me have a mustache like that. I promise you I serve you. I love you. I do what I got to do. If you don't give me that mustache, I, I'm coming through with all the praise and all the glory and all the honor. Swear. Just like that. And I left it at that because I'm, I'm trusting God that God is going to look out for me god did i just ended up with a whole beard instead <laughs> i remember feeling the two hairs when they first came and i i plucked at it in the back seat of my mom's car i'm like what no no this can't be happening i immediately started going to full panic mode and my mind spiraled and i started thinking about how I was gonna be the bearded circus lady and how I was never gonna have a husband and how no one was gonna find me attractive. And I decided that I was just gonna do my best to hide them, but I was always taught if you get rid of those hairs, they grow back even stronger. So I was like, nah, 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 I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna leave them alone. Well, eventually I ended up getting a little bit more. As I got older, I started getting a little bit more hairs and it got to the point where it was so noticeable that I started to shave that patch. And I know you guys are like cringing right now, but just like any woman with a beard, I had no idea how to handle it except for how I'd seen other people handling it. Um, it wasn't as if my daddy was so readily available to 
teach me how to care for a beard. So I did what I thought was best. And I started shaving it because I thought there was no way I was going to live the life of a normal cute girl with all these things going on. Like I already had um, some psoriasis going on, which I'll talk about in another video. I'm already naturally hairy. So I have hairy arms, like I have hair, every, like hair. I'm just always been hairy. I've been hairy since I was a little girl. And I, I always was like, you know, God, you gave me enough. Like, do I have to have this as well? Like, it's just not giving fair. It's not giving fair. And so when this happened, I it, it really caused me to be depressed. And that depression lasted a long time because there's something so... Um, this is probably not a word. I'm sure it's not, but I don't know what's the feminine equivalent of um, emasculating. But this felt defeminizing to stand in the mirror and shave my face every day. It just led to an era where I just didn't feel beautiful for a long time because how can you in that sort of situation? Anyway, longer story short, I ended up um, going from from shaving it to waxing it that was the journey because um i had to grow it out to wax it which means i had to be very honest with all the people in my life and i had to tell them i had already told my mom and my sister that i was struggling with some facial hair but now i had to be honest with my husband about the amount of upkeep i i was doing like i had to tell him that hey i get up in the morning and i run and i go shave this before you get up because i don't want you to see this i don't want you to know this about me and so i started shaving i have to finish this once i get back out of my therapy appointment but we we'll do it then okay i'm back and i actually made a mistake I, I said that's when i started shaving that's actually when i started waxing and you gotta think about it you have to be at a certain level of self-disgust and hate for yourself to wax your face. You are literally ripping individual hairs from the root out of your face with hot wax just to gain the approval of others and to feel accepted by society. Like low key, I was hating myself while thinking I was loving myself. On top of that, I would burn my skin because I was using wax that wasn't meant for sensitive skin because um, I was too ashamed to go in and ask these estheticians to wax my face. And the one girl I had started to trust, she moved. It was a lot. Now, I still wax my face, but there's a grow out period. So sometimes when I make these videos, I may have a, a beard still. And like I said, when I first got this wax, I had to start being honest with pretty much everyone. Like, my mom never knew how much um, beard hairs I had. Is this a dog hair? My mom never knew how much beard hairs I had. My sister never knew. And then my husband never knew. On top of that, I started having to show my family members. And they'll be like, oh, it ain't that bad. But you can kind of see their eyes and be like, dang, Billy D, you know. They would look at it and be like, oh, God, this is rough. It's worse, it's worse than I thought. Um, but they never judged me. They showed me they loved me. And as I started receiving that love, I started going to the store when I wouldn't have my face done um, or waxed. And I was so happy for mask in 2020 because I could do that then, but it would be something to cover it. But now there was nothing to cover it. And I wasn't in the store trying to hide my face or hope I didn't see someone I knew. I had become very honest with myself that if I had to continue to hide this and if I met a person I felt like I had to hide it from, I didn't want them to be a part of my life and I long, no longer wanted to hide that aspect of myself. So due to the love of my family members and me beginning to love myself, I have been able to do things um, like show up on camera with a full beard and be like, what's up, y'all? How y'all doing today? You know, and I think that is such a blessing when I look back on where I came from um, because I honestly felt like the scum of the earth with a beard. Now I have more understanding of health and things like that, and I understand, and I'm probably going to butcher this word, so forgive me. Um, I understand that I had 
hair truism, a part of PCOS. And so that would cause those symptoms of all of the hairiness I had from a young girl from the hairy arms and having hair grow up and show up, show up in all these different places. Um, so I'm doing things to balance that out, which is helping. Um, I still, of course, am waxing. Um, but I don't put a razor to my face every day. I'm not ripping my skin apart um, every day to have people be pleased with the way I look or for me to be pleased with the way that I look. And it's refreshing. Honestly, it's refreshing. It is definitely a ripping up of the ego because you're going to feel like everybody's looking at you and everybody's judging you and talking about you. Um it does that it breaks you down before it builds you up but i promise you if you're dealing with any kind of facial hair or insecurity start by kind of showing that to the people that um you can trust and that you love the most and then take that out into the world and show other people who you are at what you would deem your worst and you'll be so surprised to see that most people don't care and they're not they're not worried about what you got going on like man this is a walmart <laughs> we here to get groceries like we don't care that you got a beard like do your thing and the hardest part was kids because you know kids are very candid and they can say whatever at any moment and like my godson love roasting people so i thought that he was gonna roast me when he figured it out and he looked at it and went about his day he was like all right girl I'm like I mean, maybe it's because of the times we're growing up in now or whatever, but he he didn't really make a big deal out of it. And so um, I say that to encourage whoever else might be going through something, especially something physical, they feel like they may have to hide. It doesn't make them beautiful or um, it doesn't make you feel masculine or feminine or whatever the case may be, whatever it is you're trying to feel on the inside if you're dealing with something like that just show up for yourself by not caring for once um i'm not saying that if it's a health issue don't take care of it or don't study why these things occur in your body or on your body but nobody cares as much as you think they do and then also most people care even more than you think they do like the people you love, the people that you want in your circle, the people that you want around you, those people care about you so much that those little things mean nothing to them, okay? So that's just a little highlight, a little story about one of my insecurities. Maybe next time we'll talk about psoriasis because low key, psoriasis just started becoming something I've, I've been, I, maybe I've noticed I'm a little ashamed of that happens um, with me, um, but yeah. Like I said, for the for the most part, that was the biggest insecurity I had was the beard. I was so insecure to the point where if it was, this was a a scenario where God said you have one wish, you can wish anything you want, I would be torn between world peace and getting rid of the beard. Like that's how much of a big deal it was for me. Like that would be the devil side of me. Be like, get rid of the beard, girl. We can rule the world if we do that. <laughs> But I am so happy that I've learned to accept myself and all of the imperfections. And I am glad that you guys are here with me on the journey. And I look forward to seeing you all begin to accept and love the things about yourself that you deem imperfect as well. So anyway, wherever you're at and whatever you're doing, I hope that you're having a good day or had a good day. And I will talk to you guys soon. Bye.